I'm Let's sorry. Face it. We're not saying mid-range. Here on LGC, we say mid-end. <laughs> there's low end, high end. Now there's mid-end. Yes. And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly. The show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell Elks. We got Tiny with. Hell elks. That's Elksy. We got a brand new baby <laughs> Elks in training right now. <laughs> He hasn't been shot out of his first cannon yet, so he's not really full died in the uh, elks. Died in the hell. Elks. This makes zero sense for the audio <laughs> listeners. He's 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 a little he he he's got stage fright. He's a little nervous. You can tell he's like twitching around a little bit. It, 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 at least he's blinking. It, it's important to know when to blink, even when you have a camera pointed at you. A lot this of people true. just lose the ability to blink. They just stare. <laughs> and if you don't know, Jordan died. So uh, maybe mm -hmm. he'll come back next week. Who knows? Uh, quite the show for you tonight. For you this evening. I've been playing around with a bunch of stuff. A uh, bunch of Raspberry Pi related nonsense. I'm waiting. I, I'm stuck. Definitely stuck in that situation to where Amazon's just trying to fuck me on shipping. Which they didn't fuck me on shipping. Well, they kind of fucked me on shipping. But the things are in the ether. <laughs> arriving at different times at inopportune orders i'm just sitting here like shaking my fist i'm like come on I, I i need to get this thing done but that thing's gonna show up before that thing shows up not terribly pleased about that what's going on with you pedro Mateus? You, you've been breaking shit oh yeah i installed an ssl <laughs> cert for linux gamecast <laughs> and it worked because i always feel like i'm doing launch codes every time i do some shit like that i, I there was something i should have done on like Oh, I don't know, Friday, last Friday, but I'm like, I'm going to push the podcast out first. <laughs> then I'll break the entire website because that is a chain of custody that you don't want to tangle with. But fortunately, it worked. Good job me clicking on some buttons and typing some stuff in it. I'm waiting for repercussions because nothing broke while in the process of doing it. That's good. No. <laughs> that, that, that just seems like a fairly you successful task. Do you, do you not have this problem? How about you at home? Let me know. Let me a comment. I start getting worried the longer period of time things go, you know, just time ticks on and something doesn't go wrong. <sighs> Outside of my control, just out of left field, I'm like, <laughs> and I'm 100% legit about this. Like, this is, you know, maybe it's self-fulfilling. Like, if you believe in, like, willing negative things, but we're not talking about, like, things that a result of my own actions i'm like and the water heater exploded i'm like there it is all right <laughs> you know what that's not too bad you know we went a couple of months there and like i start getting nervous man that's the thing the, 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 there's a, a a bit of a threshold um because i'll go for a very long time if i do something and it works beautifully for a very long time i'll be okay with it but then after a while, it, it does kick in. But I, I think that's a bit longer than most people, at least the ones I talk to. Because <laughs> they go, no, no, no. Much like yourself, if, if it doesn't break or if it's not, you know, immediately showing some uh, unintended consequences, then, yeah, it's... Uh, I, I understand, but I, I'm very much okay with it. No, I set that up like that, and it worked, and it's still working, so we're good. I didn't even think about it. I put it out of my mind. <laughs> Unless it's Jira. Well, that's work. <laughs> I get paid to worry about that. Uh, <laughs> and Confluence, too. Uh, no, I got to, um, because um, of my past of being in the uh, Security Operations Center in Health Education England, uh, my current boss is like, ah, so you're going to set up a security plan for us and like update schedules and like everything else for uh, Jira and Confluence for us. Like, sure, I can do that. Uh, <laughs> so I was in the test environment and there were a bunch of updates for the third party apps for Jira. And I started up <laughs> updating them. And at one point, one of the um, updates fails. I was like, oh, OK, that failed to uh, write it down. And then, oh, I can't click anything else anymore. Nothing is responding. What's going on? After a while, error 500. Uh, oh, that node crashed. All right. Refresh again. It hits one of the different nodes. I go to uh, back to the third party apps. 
I can't click on anything. Oh, the other two nodes have just caught up into what happened and crashed as well. Neat. <laughs> Let's go bug the uh, infrastructure people, see if they can reboot the server the hard way. Can you? <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, that, Pedro's no longer allowed to do that. <laughs> oh, I am. In fact, I was told it's like, no, that's. I'm glad you found it in test. Because if we'd done that in stable, that would have been worse. <laughs> You need like a CC YOLO, don't you? Hmm? A CC YOLO. A little for, bit, yes. <laughs> for, for, for the email that you're pushing out. I'm like, I'm about to try something, CC YOLO. And that just go, goes out to the people that need to know about the YOLO attempt. You're like, shit, my break. Uh, yeah, no, that's why the test, that's why the test environment is there. We also have the, uh, the staging, so... You know, there, there's a backup for the test if the test dies. <laughs> That's the second thing you get to talk about when it does go wrong in production. <laughs> yeah. You're like, it didn't break in either of these. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. had that last week. <laughs> Here we are. <laughs> Dude, one of the things I was kind of excited about earlier this week, uh, since we're about to talk about video games, is uh, the Lollipop Chainsaw got a PC release. It's available on Steam, believe it or not, man. And this is like one of those weird games. I like like the uh, Spectacle Brawler, and I saw somebody mm -hmm. play it like 11 years ago. I'm like, I'll probably have fun with that. And I was like, it's only going to be on play PlayStation or whatever it was on, and or Xbox and console exclusive. Yes. You know, remember those? <laughs> and um, I saw that, and I looked at it, day one release, and I was reading the reviews, and they're like, this is worse than the PS3 on an emulator. Apparently the performance is a bit poo-poo. Yeah. It's pretty bad. And there, there's zero settings. Mm -hmm. There's resolution settings. Yeah. That's it. And it doesn't have any of the good songs in it. Uh, but it is 10% off. I don't know, man. I think I might just hold off. Now, here's the reason I brought it up. Because I went back to check it. I'm like, well, let's go see how it is on day two. Now all of the reviews are better. Mm -hmm. Sus. <laughs> that, that's the thing they they had a patch um i don't that's know exactly morning. when uh yeah <laughs> but it significantly helped i was watching uh who was it uh g-man lives he was saying that uh he did have when he f was first playing the uh the new version repop um it, it was having some performance issues okay but uh, the workaround for that was instead of playing um the repop mode in game you just switch to play the original and it works for the most part so yeah uh use that <laughs> how about um i'm gonna use a different mode i'm waiting till it's in the humble bundle yes <laughs> yeah and probably like a month then i'll get it something we're never gonna get on the consoles ladies and gentlemen is our horse who joins us each and every week to tell us that yes, despite not having opposable thumb digits, it can wield chainsaws. Yeah, we're talking about the Steam update. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, celebration time, Steam client update. Couple of new things in this one though. To play around with that I was kind of excited about. Now, Pedro runs KDE. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I hate myself. <laughs> Does it close now? Uh, the problem isn't Kitty. Uh, in this one, uh, it's straight up Fedora's problem. Oh. <laughs> and uh, with this current update of Steam, yes, it does quit. It, 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 uh, good job, Valve. You fixed it again. I look forward to you breaking it. The Here's the big time. news. Here's the big news, though, man. Uh, Steam family so for those of you with friends that are considered family you know what i'm talking about Bam. you can just add all your <laughs> friends from around the world pedro no no you cannot oh only in the same country yeah I I, I I i tried i tried to create a family for me nori my little brother and nori's sister but you can't because nori's sister is like yeah i tried to join but uh that's from a different country that can't have that Damn it, Valve. <laughs> Valve I think Valve, I already knew that go. that was a thing, but I forgot. I was just like, oh, yeah, no, let people share my big ass Steam accounts. Yeah. <laughs> Probably doing it. You know, it's like, hey, you're in different countries, different IP. Valve, you need to release a VPN. <laughs> what? Create the problem <laughs> <have> one. <laughs> and the solution. 
I'm like, oh, do you have family outside of your country? Use Steam VPN. <laughs> yeah, I probably wouldn't mind paying the extra for a Steam VPN. You gotta check this out, though. Family Sharing Mark II. I've had this for a little while. You might have if you were in the uh, beta for it. It was like this third step that you had to go through. Uh, big change. Previously, you know, if somebody was using your account and they were part of your family and they were playing a game, you couldn't do shit on your account, man. Like, you had to be not doing anything on Steam. Now you can be on Steam playing a different game. Mm -hmm. As long as you're not trying to play the same game, they can play a game from your library. And that is really, really neat. On top of that, it will give you your own save games on your account. You'll get your own achievos and uh, access to all the workshop stuff. So it's like really legitimately having a copy of that game. Isn't that right, Stroy? <laughs> Everybody say that? You're Stroy. Can you, can you say Stroy? I'm Stroy. All right. Dude, we got yeah. a talking hell ox, man. We might as well have. Isn't that yeah, right, Frank? No, you have the uh, the straw that's the uh, embodiment of the hell elks in the. Um, I, listen, dude, I have this for. World. Listen, this is for our safety. This is the only way to kill a hell elk. <laughs> this is a silver straw, right? It's the only way to take one of those bastards down. That, uh, Yeah, you know what? Elksy might look cute and shit, but he will fuck you up, man. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's why he's in his own plane of oblivion. <laughs> Pretty cool. And I do have good news. Uh, if you play Trackmania with us on Tuesdays, uh, or if you watch the show uh, when uh, Ogie was on, Ogie's just been really upset that Big Picture thing just did not work with his new, like, super, like, 70 inch TV. The resolution display just didn't kick in. So he had to go into Big Picture mode and, in order to get everything to Inbiggin. It mm -hmm. works now. Oh. High DBI <laughs> detection. It's a little bit better, which I don't use because I don't have a 70 inch, but I, I got like 40 inches, dude. I'm good. <laughs> did you just snooze the ads? I did. All right. Because we're currently in the middle of the thing and I want people to get ads in the middle. I, I was going <laughs> to click dismiss and it disappeared, man. <laughs> Pretty cool, man. Uh, do you, I, I remember the last time I tried the high DPI thing is like the first time they did it, it was comically bad because it was like a 400%. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't. It, even it wasn't two X. That wasn't two X. Valve, stop lying. That wasn't two X. That was four X. It was wild, man. And uh, <laughs> I thought about cutting it on one other time, and I'm like, no, I just I, I like my nice little tight. I got a 43 inch monitor, man, and I sit that like an arm length plus some more away from it. You know, it's on the other side of the desk, so I'm good. Yeah, no, on um over here on Wayland, it's fine. I have it set to automatically detect. And I have, uh, I have mixed refresh rates and I have mixed, uh, scaling between the different monitors. Mm -hmm. Like the, um, the UHD screen is at 150% scaling. So it has effectively 2560 by 1440. Now you know you can and do that with X11, right? It, yes. Um, uh, to a degree. <laughs> no, I, I can uh, replicate that 100%. Not with the, uh, mixed, uh, refresh rates. Yeah, I could. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> Boy, did I try. Oh, no, no, with, no. Listen, I, I didn't say with just using one PC. I just said I could replicate <laughs> it with X11. Ah, uh, no. See, the big cheats now. Because <laughs> I tried that with the 1080, and boy, that was, uh, that was a pain in the neck. Uh, but yeah, no, with um, Wayland, it works. And even moving it between uh, the uh, 2560 monitor, the 1440p native one, and the UHD one that's effectively scaled to be the same size, it handles the transition really, really well, and it maintains the same relative size between the two monitors. Nice. Very good. Finally, they, <laughs> they finally got it right. So, yeah, no, the, the one thing for me, literally, uh, on Steam right now is right-click the uh, tray icon, exit Steam, it shows, like, the main window with the, uh, you know, logging off. And the window goes away. And then there's a zombie process that just stays. And the tray icon stays. Like, are you gonna quit? No. And if I tell the computer to shut down, System D goes, yeah, Steam is still running. I'm gonna sit here for 90 seconds because fuck you, that's why. Uh <laughs> Fedora has the uh, kill-all package, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 
which is why uh, Kill All Dash Nine Steam is the top of my <laughs> most run commands on this box. <laughs> Wild man, yeah, I've never run into that on Debian, but uh, yeah, cool. I'm glad it's there. Let's talk about a big honky update. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, you want to you want to want to reach around and be like. <laughs> Wow. Uh, you, yeah, you've... no, uh, we will grab the uh, the sack of Proton and uh, <laughs> uh, very much appreciate that uh, all of the new games that are coming out and even some old games, surprisingly enough. Uh, are, I'm going to go being... on the record. I'm going to go on the record right here, man. Uh, <laughs> Strip Fighter is zero, right? Mm hmm. Okay. Uh, right here. Fixed <laughs> Strip Fighter is zero for not starting on some setups. <laughs> Yeah, that game no, is, uh, shut up the fuck up. That game <laughs> is exactly what you think it is. And it's on Steam. Mm -hmm. That's all I had to say about that. That was my big takeaway <laughs> from this. I was like, oh, that's not good. Oh, no, that, that, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, all right, it was. All right. But yeah, no, the thing that jumped out at me was uh, the one new game that they have on the now playable section. It's APB Reloaded. Now, if you check ProtonDB from about a year ago, there is my report saying, yeah, you can pretty much just play APB Reloaded now uh, if you go into the uh, INI and disable the Steam integration, ironically enough. So, yeah, apparently they fixed whatever was causing the Steam integration with that game to not work in the new uh, Proton Experimental, and it just runs out of the box, which is very nice. I do appreciate me some uh, APB Reloaded. Uh, all the customization in that game is just very very nice um and yeah there's a bunch of more things um hunt showdown which i wasn't even aware that it worked with proton now <laughs> that was one of the um like multiplayer survival extraction shootery type games that didn't work with proton for the longest time but apparently not only does it work now it used to work but then something uh, after a recent game update broke it but that's been uh, sorted in the new uh, experimental version. So, yeah, if you don't have uh, Proton Experimental set as your default, yeah, probably should. <laughs> One of the things I was concerned about, though, man, they, you know, I, I get this, man. They fixed voice chat for For Honor and Uno. I get it for, you know, For Honor, right? You're playing that, you want to talk about, you know, have a nice, rational conversation about the evolution of warfare and all the stuff that you normally get into in a for honor uh, voice chat. But those psychopaths and Uno, nobody wants to be that. That's what, just you madness. don't want a four-year-old calling you racial epithets? <laughs> yeah, Uno, man. Uno is just like, have a civil conversation in like Battlefield. <laughs> Uno, man, you don't need to bring, you should have left that undone, Valve. Too spicy. Uno. What the fuck does Uno get a voice chat for anyway? That's. I'm trying to think. The last time I played Uno was, you know, IRL Uno with the physical. Let's just go ahead and wind that back, man. Uh, video game developers, uh, we're good. We got Discord now. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> the, the only time I go into voice chat settings in 2024, insert current year after this, is to disable your shit, unless it's like Lethal Company. Yeah. If the voice chat is in and of itself a mechanic, yeah, that makes sense. If it's just hacked on, don't. Yeah. Or give me a mute button or something to disable it. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, you know, that was like, a, somebody made like a nice little ad. Uh, and I was like, this would be an, an advert for um, Discord if it was still the 90s. And it was like, separate phone line not required <laughs> gaming. And because like, that was the thing, dude. You, you weren't going to be playing a voice. When, when did we get? No, I, I think I had a cable modem. Like, because voice was like sketch. We just typed. We had like see you, see me, but that was just the webcam thing. Mm -hmm. And you were talking like maybe five frames a minute. <laughs> Good to see. Plenty of work done on that. Uh, again, stay out of Uno <laughs> voice chat lobbies, dude. Scum and villainy. That's all it is. Black and white. God game. That black and yeah. white. The game you can fucking buy. <laughs> doesn't exist but i don't think it's available digitally legally because of licensing 
Yeah, um, there's a couple of games in that um, from that time that are also in that state. Uh, Heretic 2. Mm. <laughs> Reason I want to bring this up. The initial release of Open Black, after five years in development, is here. And I've been waiting five years to slap that damn cow. Because that's all I've ever done in this <laughs> game. That is my entire experience with the black and white. Being like the initial release, so like known issues, very basic stuff like with some like web GPU issues. But most of the basic engine features are there. You can go play around with it and it works with Windows, Mac OS, and of course Linux experimental support for Android and iOS. Like nothing groundbreaking. I have no idea. I, I know it's like the God game sim. My flatmate had a copy of it because I walked in and I saw the hand. Unattended PC. I was probably in there being malicious as a motherfucker. Let's be honest. And I grabbed the dribble and I was like, wait a minute. And like, I was occupied. man. <laughs> That's all I know about the game, man. Black and white, uh, critically well received, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, it was at the time uh, because you know Peter Molyneux. Uh, he didn't really have the reputation of over promising and under delivering. That was the Fable games that did that. Uh, <laughs> this was just as he was, you know, he, him and his company. Um, they developed the uh, Populous games, and. Black and white was effectively just, you know, more populous. It was effectively what populous did, but with an actual avatar of your god entity, the cow that you could slap, <laughs> or the, the cat, or whatever uh, creature you happen to pick as yours. And a lot of people really liked it. Uh, I had a classmate of mine that really, really enjoyed um, black and white. I never could get into it. I couldn't get into populous either. Not, not my jam. But this particular uh, open source re-implementation open black it, that's a very good first release. That okay, some stuff is not being rendered properly, clearly <laughs> uh, but that is impressive. That looks pretty much at least on the rendering side it's pretty much there. It's early two thousands three D, dude. And like you, yeah. you, <laughs> you can't always be like, oh, the rendering's busted. I'm like, is it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> because they have side by side screenshots. <laughs> yeah, well, some of the special uh, particle effects are not uh, working. The shading isn't right. The color of a number of the different textures is completely off. But yeah, th those are minimal because yeah, you can see side by side things aren't rendering as they should, but that's very good. For the first release, that's very good. That's it's been working on this for five years. Good. I'm like, let's talk about like real game preservation. This is where it's at. Yeah. <laughs> right there. Just cold reverse engineering. Like this thing will be able to continue running far, far into the future. We've talked about Deadlock a couple times, because why? Well, Valve doesn't always make video games, so we're always kind Not of interested anymore. in that. No. <laughs> Not really known for it, but Deadlock's got a little bit of news this week. There's a huge blow for those of you not interested in playing the game and having fun. Instead, you'd like to go to tracker sites, look up number digits, and, uh, you know, min-max that. MMRs. Meaning. It's a very simple meaning, if you don't know about the MMRs. Matchmaking rating. That's according to Google, because I had to look that up. It's a word, when used, talking about tracking those stats. And there was a website, as you might imagine. Somebody's already created one for Deadlock, because, you know, it's a hero shooter, MOBA, whatever. Like, I need to know who's winning the most, what characters have the best win rates, and all that. Even though this game's, like, changing, like, multiple times a day. I was like, nah. <laughs> Dear vultures, please hold a moment. We're not even f done. <laughs> they just cut it off. They just cut it off. They just like, well, why don't you just go test the pre-alpha? Not quite even there yet. <laughs> and quit trying to. You know, it's not really gaming the system. But like, do you ever? I don't ever like think about doing like that because I know like a bunch of 
Listen, I know somebody's out there is like, this is, this is the only way you can play like Dota and CSGO. You could be able to track all this. And I'm like, that's not how I play video games. Never have, never will be. A lot of people like the meta gaming, not necessarily the playing of the game, but being able to game the situation so that when they do play, they have all of the advantages. I can see why. The game isn't out yet. It, it, legitimately, Valve did not want to release the game when they first did so. The Steam page for it was stark. <laughs> it had, technically, it had the bare minimum of information and the bare minimum requirements for a Steam page. <laughs> uh, but it was just not, it, it was very clear that Valve, did, no, we, we don't want to release it just yet. It's not ready. It's not done. We're not done. So, yeah, uh, you know. That's a secret, Pedro. They are done. <laughs> it's never going to be done. <laughs> are they going to do uh, perpetual early access on it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, how long was Dota 2 in early access? 30 weeks. Because this was a while. Oh, I have no idea. <laughs> I played enough I remember- Dota 2 to be like, I don't like these types of games. Uh, they're not my jam. I don't like dislike them. It might have been... I played enough Deadlock to be like, I get it. But then again, like, it might be fun with a group of people. And like, what is it really? Let's be honest. The time sink to get okay at it. Not good. Okay. <laughs> uh, I don't look to be like the best player on the team anymore. Never have really. My goal is always to be not a detriment. Mm-hmm. At, le- at the, the very least, just... I want it to be easy to carry. <laughs> yeah. Don't be the one that's actively feeding the enemy more and more hills. Uh, I'd play a lot What's of What's your favorite game. hero shooter? Paladins. Other than Paladins. <laughs> uh, that was easy, wasn't it? <laughs> Maybe Tim Fortress 2, because that's the only one that's actively still running. Uh, <laughs> that's like OG man that's like Quake World yeah <laughs> but yeah no um, I never played Overwatch I mean you could have said Concord <laughs> <laughs> oh what was the epic one that they killed when Fortnite became popular uh, oh, God. Battleborn Battleborn I think it was Epic not only killed it swiftly Epic actually did good with that one because they released all the uh, yeah. models and assets for use mm-hmm like, I don't know what Sony's up with with Concord right now. They're like, you're not going to really, that thing, that thing stinks too much. Nobody wants to be seen playing it. Unless you bring it back and it's like John Cord or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Concord. What do you mean, Concord? No, no, no. This is our new game, the Airbus uh, Dreamliner. <laughs> they're they're going to release it. It's only going to be available on Game Pass. Which makes no sense. Sony, no. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it's uh, like a poison extra pill. Fuck you. Yes. It's a poison pill. They're like, Microsoft, here, you can just have this. Put, put this on Game Pass, see what happens. <laughs> People love it. Uh, and then it becomes really popular. And then Sony, like, <laughs> right. <laughs> then all of a sudden, it needs to log in. <laughs> of course it does. <laughs> you need to sign into your Sony account on your Xbox. Oh god, yes. Sony, please do that. <laughs> I didn't get a chance this week to look into it, but apparently um Helldivers has entered into the extract part of its life cycle to where they're like this update or whatever you gotta pay for. I don't know. I could be wrong. Let me know. Let me know. It was something <laughs> like that. And I meant to look into it. So we're going to move on to the next story. Let's yes. talk about <laughs> AMD deprioritizing flagship gaming GPUs. Jack, who? <laughs> Not even making that up. <laughs> He's got a strategy to go against big green. Uh, well, because we've all known him, you know, the rumor mill and all that. Uh, AMD not going to be doing high end this generation. Jack came out. He's like, yo man, that's true. That's the true, true. We're going to be focusing on Navi 48 and Navi 44. And he's a senior vice president over at AMD. So he probably knows what he's talking about. 
here's what he wants to do. He wants to hit 40% market penetration compared to like what they currently have with AMD, which is like 11, 12%. And uh, his strategy is something that I think we would all agree on is like selling affordable GPUs in volume. Let NVIDIA keep their 5090, their 5070s and all that. Let's make some GPUs in that three, four, five hundred dollar range that are competitive, good 1440p gamers, gaming systems, and you know, maybe like 12, 16 gigajoules on the memory RAM as standard, so you don't have to get too crazy with it. I think that's probably a winning strat because I saw some people a little upset, but when it comes down to pricing, I, I, that's what we need, right? This is what we all hope yeah. Arc was, right? <laughs> The, what was it? The RX 480. If it hadn't been, you know, overhyped between what it actually could have done, it, it was an okay GPU to the point that they reused it for the four. Are you, uh, you going to explain to the children what the 480 was? <laughs> the RX 480. It was, you know, the, uh, the Polaris day. GPU. Right. <laughs> uh, it's, um, it, it, that GPU was so massively popular that the entire new generation, new, uh, was effectively using the exact same GPU uh, for the RX 580 and the 590. It just clocked higher. And it was, when the RX 480 first came out, it was 200 bucks. 199 that was the MSRP. Yeah. That's amazing. That, That's called a good value didn't... card. That's what they want to do right now. And reintroduce yeah. value into the GPU midrange. Mm-hmm. That that is exactly what they should be doing because I'm let's sorry, face it, we're not saying mid range here on LGC. We say mid end. <laughs> there's low end, high end. Now there's mid end. Yes. <laughs> I mean, if your everything else is going to be ends, then yeah, it could be. Listen, mid-end. the mid end stops because most of us don't have twelve hundred bucks. Yeah, that that's where people are actually buying GPUs. If you look at the uh, the hardware survey. The popular GPU is the 3060, and everything else is either a laptop or very much similarly priced AMD variants or the Steam Deck. Uh, <laughs> but it is the popular that, GPUs is whatever comes in like the mid end system pre builts. That's it. Yeah, it, it is. You buy the pre built, and then a few years down the line, you buy another GPU for the pre built. For, uh, you know, between two and three hundred bucks, that's like the big investment that you do so you can continue to play the new games. That makes perfect sense. That's all AMD needs to worry about It is no, to have a competitive. It doesn't need to be the best. Clearly, they can't the make be, the there's, best. There's, there's, there's no worst. There's no mid, <laughs> mid-range. There's no mid-end yeah. right now. None. It doesn't exist. None. It, it, the what you know the mid end used to be is now the low end uh and the prices uh don't seem to really reflect just how low end used to work back in the day so uh, they got abstract man you know during the whole covid bullshit that is when, when the world a- ended yes <laughs> when amd and nvidia both both figured out that there are some motherfuckers out there willing to pay that much for gpus they saw it with a scalping going on mm-hmm. before they could even get product to sell and they're like hey we like that NVIDIA is in the unique position of like, how long has this 4090 been out? Anybody got anything to challenge it? No. Nope. Oh, we got to beat it ourselves. I guess we're just going to keep that price. Yeah, we like this new pricing. We're just going to stick mm-hmm. with it. Nothing you can do about it. So make it up in volume. And it doesn't, here's the problem. You got to have that value card because nobody's going to give a hot floppy dam if AMD releases a $300 stinker. They're like, here's our next generation. It is great. Value card, $399. Almost as fast as a 4060 6 gig. Almost. Now it does require 500 watts. <laughs> that's, that's the big one. It, it, it's it can't value. Be that. People keep talking <laughs> just about price. You need that value. That's what value is price performance. 3060s has- are great value card if it's got 12 gigajoules of memory RAM on it. Yeah, it has to be, it doesn't have to be the best. It just has to be competitive. Go back to competing on price, because I remember Lisa Sue saying, we're not going to compete on price anymore. You should. 
They're yeah, not gonna absolutely compete on should. Price. That they're not two hundred dollar market again. Again, again. I'm going to keep <laughs> smacking you over the head with the chair. They're they're not competing. They're not. There, there's no <laughs> that's competition. The problem. <laughs> they and should. None of, and none of that's true, ladies and gentlemen, because this thing all goes to pot when Big Blue shows up. No, not Red Hat. No, the other Big Blue. <laughs> IBM. Yes. <laughs> Wait, IBM GPUs. Power Check Nine GPUs. Let's go. <laughs> Legally distinct Fedora, nice obey, available, store.linuxgamecast.com. Go check it out. Now, Intel Battle Mage. See, looking at this, this makes perfect sense, though, with the GPUs. Like, let's just have a good value offering. People are going to buy it. It's simple as that. Put mm -hmm. the thing out there that is being ignored. Brilliant move. And you can probably, you know, you got to make it up in volume. You know, you're not going to be able to make seven hundred dollars worth of a uh, silicon and you know your uh build build material on that and charge twelve hundred for it you're gonna have to like get it like 190 and you can charge like 300 for it something like that make it up <laughs> great plan unless intel has battle mage in a state to come and just piss all of your cheerios because mm -hmm. intel desperately needs battle mage to work and intel has a history of fucking over amd <laughs> losing in court and paying a fine mm -hmm. <laughs> let's just lie <laughs> let's just lie yeah. in the benchmarks like, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, it's not the early odds. We would know way beforehand. But I could see a situation. This is great for us, by the way. Now, if you're like an AMD fan human or like whatever, and you're like, well, you're spoken bad about like, whatever, go, go play in traffic. Adults are talking. Well, people who cosplay as adults. This is great for us because if AMD executes on this strategy and Intel shows up to the party too, trying to execute with Battle Mage, guess what? We have that C word Pedro kept using competition. Then they're going to have to compete on price. Then it, we, we we could potentially see a situation where they're selling it at or possibly below cost to try to at least into on Intel. I believe firmly believe after what they sold Arc for the Founders Editions. I, uh huh. Let's be happy yeah. about it. Let's hope AMD pulls this off. This is nothing but win. Like, even if the bad situation happens for AMD, AMD don't love you either. Intel sure as fuck don't love you either. And if they got to battle it out, let's all get some popcorn crawl up on the hill and collect mm -hmm. some reasonably priced, good value video cards. One win for everybody. Love to fucking see it. Now, moving on to a completely different topic, and that's <laughs> bullshit too. Hardware Mon, Intel Arc, finally getting. The ability to expose this is a patch for the <laughs> Intel GPUs. LM sensor, you know it, you love it. Gotta love those digits, baby. Speaking of baby, this is baby steps. I'm happy to see it because it's not there. If you've watched my ARC A310 <laughs> review, I might have pointed that bullshit out. Interfacinglinux.com. Go give it a watch. So yeah, um I'm truly perplexed this is you know if you've typed in lm sensors sensors detect and it's that thing you type in sensors and there's a bunch of GUIs in front of it that'll tell you like hey how hot the thing be how much juice is it using zero kelvin <laughs> is the fan a spinning and you needed a custom intel provided binary in order to do this under linux up and well still to this day you do unless you want to like add this patch yourself to the kernel and build it it's going to be there which is Good. Like th these are very basic things that, like, I didn't have words for. Like, I, I bitched up and down for like two solid weeks, like in the pre shows. And I'm like, no one has reported this but Intel cards that I've watched under Linux. Like, I guess everybody was just happy with like the built in fan control and like whatever they bought. And I happened yeah. to buy the one card that <laughs> whatever had, the firmware was doing that was, that was cracked fine. out. And uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, so yeah, there's no way to control fans yet. Hopefully that's up next. But yeah, at least you'll be able to know what your temperatures are up, up to and that your fans are spinning. That's good. That's really good. And, you know, following up from there, when there is a way to actively control the fan and maybe clock speeds and everything else, 
Dear core control people, I've been using your uh, core control GUI for my AMD GPU and AMD CPU for a very, very, very long time. Um, do uh, Please do support. I've seen your issue tracker on GitLab. Please do support Intel Arc. It, it would be awesome to have both Intel and AMD since NVIDIA is still going to be NVIDIA for a little while longer. Uh, <laughs> so we could have. Um, at least the uh, the two current cards that Mesa supports properly, uh, just have those in core CTRL and be able to set fan curves and power uh, the power profile. Maybe set a uh, power cap like you can on the AMD GPUs. Because ever since I put this uh, 6700 XD at 150 watts cap, I haven't heard the fans kick up ever. <laughs> I mean, you could just buy an Nvidia card. <laughs> okay, we are running long, everybody. Uh, we got one more thing we need to talk about. And that That's is a quick one. <laughs> dewiring alpacas. Oh, yes. The uh, fine, fine folks at uh, Input Labs, they've been working on the alpaca uh, for a while. Uh, effectively, they sent me, thank you very much, the working prototype for the reference edition. And one of the things that they said they really wanted to do was to have it a wireless version, because right now you need to have it plugged in to the Pi Zero, that's the microcontroller. So they want to have one that works, you know, completely wirelessly. And they were having issues with both the antenna layout. <laughs> uh, apparently, if you have the antenna going vertically, it's uh, worse than if you have it going horizontally parallel to the board. And um, they had some issues uh, with the bandwidth uh, because Two megabits per second, it was okay, but it was having some, like, cutouts. Uh, at 250, it was much more stable, but it was more prone to interference. So they ended up just replacing the uh, wireless module with the uh, ESP32C6 Mini. And they revised the PCB that the Alpaca has in it, so that you could just slot in the uh, ESP2. 32 uh and yeah it this apparently is going to be the way going forward unless they hit another snag there it is you can see the uh the bits that slot in and how you're gonna do it and i very much look forward to it it is seriously what input labs have been doing with the alpaca has been impressive as probably the company that's actively innovating in the um controller space and you can buy a pre-soldered but not put together alpaca it's about 150 euros on their store it's not cheap but uh, if you have the means you can just buy the pcbs uh and 3d print the case yourself so it, it that's the beauty of uh, having an entirely open source controller please keep going <laughs> wireless controllers are hard man yeah <laughs> yeah so hear me out Kids like all this vintage bullshit, right? That's yes. Uh, they do. Yeah. Kids like the vintage bullshit. That's yes. <laughs> the <For> hipsters? Yes. <laughs> kids. With their cassette tapes. With their 2000 era digital cameras. Isn't it CDs? <laughs> Aren't CDs the retro thing now? <laughs> no love for the mini disc. <laughs> so we just need to skip this wireless crap. <laughs> At least what you're doing. We need to go old school. Alpaca, what I want to see. IR. That's right. Give me a red blinky light on the end of that thing. <laughs> light of sight. Bring back the days where you could fuck somebody up by waving your hand over to the right a little bit. <laughs> Can't do that with modern Bluetooth. Wi-Fi. I mean, with Bluetooth, you might be able, if you have a, uh, one of those Pringle can antennas, and you're broadcasting at that similar frequency, you might be able to cause some interference. I don't know, dude. Like, um, like in all seriousness, no. Like, wireless is completely squirrely. Like, I was trying to explain, like, it was too close to the Wi-Fi hotspot. That's why the reception was bad. That's a no. very counterintuitive thing for some people. <laughs> like, But I'm like, just trust me on this. <laughs> 
mid range. Move, Move it further oh, away, and the problem will be fixed. The speed go up, burr. Don't ask. So, uh, yeah, good work, everybody. Over at Alpaca doing that. Like, I mean, they keep adding stuff to this. It's going to be like the controller tower of power. It's going to be like the thicky chonky boy. And uh, the community, uh, if you're on their Discord, uh, someone's actually made a dual analog stick instead of having the one analog stick with the little nub. Oh, yeah. 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 You posted a picture of that. In the, uh, yeah. Discord you game. can have like the full on dual analog stick. And I'm very, 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 very tempted to figure out how to, uh, get the uh Pedro PCB break his controller yeah <laughs> I'm 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 tempted I'm very mm. very tempted to uh go and have a look because I really I really like the alpaca don't you and dare sit up another controller I want to watch him break I, it'll be <laughs> it's going to bug him Send a yeah, and uh thank you FX boy yes I did mean the uh, the pie pico the, all right <laughs> it is the um microcontroller raspberry pi and yeah it is i love everything about what they're doing like designing a, an open source controller and letting the community iterate on that design and improving on it to make it wireless and whatnot that's that's awesome i'm just saying <laughs> there's room to integrate a taser <laughs> oh yes <laughs> Next level. Four uh, triple A's? Yeah, you could probably generate enough voltage. <laughs> Let's go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, one little bit of hate mail before this thing completely falls apart. I've not been doing a good job of trying to rush through the show tonight. Well over an hour and 13 minutes into it. Yeah. Let's go. <laughs> it was supposed to be a short show. Good luck next time. If you like what we do, you want to get in that Discord. We don't tell you to come to our Discord. We actively say stay away unless you're really interested in all the bullshittery that goes on the other six days of the week. You can do that by becoming a Twitch sub. If you're a Twitch sub, link it up to our super secret Discord. We're in there hanging out the other six days of the week. You can come play Track Mania with us. Or if you are one of our beautiful party patrons, man, there's just an entire list of bonus stuff we throw your way for your support each and every week. And, and yeah, there's some Discord in that too. But there's so much more. That's the best way to do it. We got Amazon wish list, cryptocurrency, you name it. Uh, we got a store. You can buy stickers. You can buy uh, shirts. It's all fun stuff. That lets us do the show. Kind of fun to do the show, even though it might be a little, little, little janky every now and then, like tonight. <laughs> but the show must go on. Uh, we need to be in the Guinness Book World World Records for the longest continuous running Linux gaming podcast. For a while there, we were the only one. I think right now there's a few others. <laughs> they don't have the like Linux power. gaming podcasts. We were the one option for a very long time. We were. Listen, man, like nobody was doing this. Yeah, we predate <laughs> Steam on Linux. Yeah, and I think one of the things that we've accidentally done, which I think is super cool. Is you basically, you know, like before Steam, but like ever since Steam hit into current date, you can go into our show notes or just watch the video and get a snapshot, a weekly snapshot of the pro progression of Linux gaming mm -hmm. over 12 years, 13 years. Oops, we didn't mean to do that, but it's kind of cool <laughs> that we did. Well, start data mining LinuxGameCast.com. <laughs> Uh, they don't, they don't get to, <laughs> they don't. I'm looking at you open AI and, uh, let's, <laughs> Singapore. If you just come from Singapore, I apologize, dude, but like all the TikTok, TikTok and, uh, the Microsoft, its own AI, the Google AI, like all that stuff's blocked, dude. I'm like, get the hell out of here. Why? Because you got too greedy. Thank you again. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Uh, at, remember to add reply unaccounted for in discord tomorrow and he will give you a magic number what that or number what? will be we will never know no <laughs> can't tell you it's up for you to decide what to do with that magic number <laughs> but a magic number you get regardless <laughs> just uh 
completely randomly. Yes, you will yes. get a magic number. <laughs> it's a the it's the original ping, the Pedro number generator. <laughs> you want to get that ping, but I do want to thank not one, not two, but three new patrons this week. Starting out with a penguin kicks down the door, one that was so long it couldn't even show up on the um <laughs> <laughs> little typey thing. Another Jordan. We now have two Jordans. To the best of my knowledge, is Jordan number two. The other Jordan. And Pasadena. Wait, the whole of Pasadena? Yes. <laughs> the <That's> province. Uh... <laughs> Pasadena itself. The county. Or... <laughs> the city state of Pasadena. Uh, yeah, I was going to ask, is the mayor one? <laughs> <laughs> It is quite brilliant. Uh, have all joined us. Pretty dope. Stick around. Your name will be in the credits. Now, before we get out of here and before this thing explodes, it's really getting cranky at us. Let's uh, get a little bit of hate mail because last week we dared ask, like, what's... I said the wrong name. <laughs> oh, you did? Yes. <laughs> That's the, the, the why George decided to get in touch. <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, so uh, we're talking about um, that lock, and I uh, said that it was a lot like Strife, but I didn't mean Strife, I meant Smite. And George agrees, like, Strife is a traditional overhead MOBA that went defunct in 2018. Correct! It's also a Doom Engine um, first-person RPG type of situation, but we're gonna get ahead. No, no, I understand. I t uh, honestly confuse Smite and Strife myself on occasion. Smite is a traditional MOBA with a camera behind your character on ground level. Yes. Uh, Deadlock is a shooter with MOBA rules and features a lot of verticality, uh, end level geometry interaction, finding cover from enemy fire, climbing on and walking into buildings, slides, dashes, jumps, so many jumps in different flavors, vanilla, double dash. Uh, wall, active item, even rocket jumps, potentially if explosive projectiles don't get removed from the several unreleased characters. High skill ceiling for movement, basically. Uh, what else? Three melee moves for everyone. Viable items that can give you a whole new... That's just the MOBA. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's the stuff... Uh, th that That's the stuff important to me anyway. Someone who barely touched MOBAs before this. Okay, so... If you've touched MOBAs before that, you don't like the game? Is that what you're telling us? Barely touched. Barely touched MOBAs. Yeah. Uh, it's... That's the thing. It From what I played, not of Strife, but of Smite, uh, and the very little that I played of that lock as well, it's about the same amount, they looked very similar. And the time to kill in Deadlock was very much... The nail in the coffin for my enjoyment of it, because you don't play MOBAs though. I don't. I never really have. Don't. Never will. <laughs> like, <laughs> so hey, look, it? this thing that I in the genre that I don't play, I don't like it. <gasps> <laughs> Provide me with your expert opinion on. The <laughs> <laughs> just, no, sir. My opinion I don't like was it. very much I don't like, so I'm not gonna. <laughs> like nobody's like. Damn, we thought we had Pedro with this. <laughs> this was going to be the one. There was one MOBA that I liked that was a 2D platformer uh, MOBA. Ah, what was it called? Uh, it's on that, was, Steam. that was Super Mario Brothers 2, dude. We've been over this. <laughs> uh, it was on Steam, and it had a Linux version. Uh, fuck, what's it called? I don't know. Who, 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 he, he, he. <laughs> You're damn right, George. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like, Deadlock? Here's Deadlock. Deadlock's gonna beat everybody else the same way LOL does, because it's free. You play it, and uh, Valve's gonna work on it. There's It's gonna be perpetual. It could, could, like, listen, like, what's the difference between Deadlock and uh, Dota to, like, somebody who really, really doesn't play them? One's top-down. The camera, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Camera positioning. <laughs> if, like, you went, Eric, and you're like, that that's Deadlock. I'm like, sure. Awesome Nuts was the name of the awesome game that I can nuts. remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. on. That, that, that was the one MOBA that I actually played to any significant degree. <laughs> I played a little bit of the one on, uh, you remember like Savage? What was it? Savage XR or something like that? Ooh, I remember Savage. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it looked really good on Linux. It had a Linux client for 
weird reasons, man. And I was like, all right, now I got on that and played around. I'm like, it just wasn't my jam. And, uh, you know, I played enough Deadlock because I know eventually we'll walk around with it in the after shows. And, um, but it doesn't hook me. And I played Dota 2. It just doesn't hook me. Like, that type of play style is not my thing, man. But hey, I'm yeah. glad, you know, everything's got difference. <laughs> you know, it's, I understand. I am, I'm on your side, George, because <laughs> I could go, all first-person shooters are the same, bro. <laughs> Got a gun. They're shooting all Doom pew clones. Pew. Yeah. Everything's, do everything's Doom clone. Everything's a Wolfenstein clone. <laughs> and you know what? You wouldn't be completely wrong. <laughs> Just about every single FPS to this day still has a little bit of that uh, yeah. Wolfenstein Doom DNA. <laughs> you, you take out the shooty pew pew thing, you like how much game you got left? <laughs> Fair point. All right, beautiful people. Thanks for showing up, hanging out with us, uh, including uh, getting a chance to witness uh, the the birth of a fresh hell elks, <laughs> elksy has been struggling this entire time you think they're ai i mean what, what, what we're, we're elks training you know it's a large elks model <laughs> they were gonna fire them off in orbit <laughs> what <laughs> lems man elks model. yeah <laughs> but it's so tiny what the fuck do you think i need the a6000 for <laughs> elks ain't gonna train themselves uh. <laughs> The future of deer tubing is here. <laughs> no, dude, I'm just saying. Oh, man. Jordan's dead, FX boy. We mentioned that. Ah, <laughs> uh, on that bombshell. We're going to have cues the cues amuse. Yeah. You can always find this nightmare train pulling out of the station each and every Saturday night, usually about 8 p.m. ish, right back here on Twitch. There'll be a link in the description. If there's not, you can suss it out. I got faith in you. Get in touch with me. I'm over on X. At Vinstone, I'm on our Mastodon, mast.linuxgamecast.com, just at Vin. Of course, as I said, I'm in our Discord. I participate in our Discord. I talk as much shit as everybody else. I do. Come uh, scream at me there. And uh, of course, Interfacing Linux, if you got any questions about your audio, video, multimedia production, and or there's even a gaming section if you got a question about that. And you don't want to use the Reddits and you want to use something without, like, that's not data mining you to piss them back and doesn't have ads on it. I'm trying to make one of those. Come help me out. Yeah, no, you can find me on Mastodon. It's uh, the one last bit of social medias that I will actively maintain. I'm technically on Space Hay as well, but I created my account and I never <laughs> used it. So uh, We're going to do that in the after shows. I'm going to put Pedro on my top yeah. <laughs> space or some shit, whatever I can do. Uh, an account in four with the actual number four at mass.linuxgamecast.com. I guess if you want to, you can follow me on Space Hay. Any famous last words there, uh, Elksy? What's that? Roll some <laughs> credits. Existence is pain. Yes, that's right. Credit. Why was I programmed to feel pain? <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We need to thank our advisor. Coming up in a minute. Probably. Yeah. Our Theron, all of our executive producers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, E and E, Shep, Karadaki, Drummer 7, The Targos, Barbara, and Scott, Atomic, and Mike. And the little Nicky fans, Turbo Tree Sloth, Glorious Hagro, Basil, Empty, and Casey Clism, and the Sea Monsters, Dancing Joe, John, Dirty Dean, Angel, Dementor, System T, RL, Rider X, Mackin, and Nehemiah. All the Death Notes, Red Ski, Leonardo, Steve. And the Death Notes. Hey, we're going to have Dodger, some Rohit Chris, coming up Steve, in these cheerlings. Nightbot just curb checked uh, Rohit's <laughs> five dudes, all caps. Ah, oh, shit. Joanna, Nick. Jason, Lord Mucka, Devandro, APKDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDDD
and reinstalled enough important uh, media libraries to where Audacious can't play Waves right now. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> like I said, we're on teetering edge. Five dudes.